in this video something about the current amplification of a transistor. Could be germanium, could be silicon. And I made by purpose a test circuit where I only wanted to demonstrate the test of a NPN transistor. And to be precise a germanium NPN transistor. It is the AC187 and here on the test board with the crocodile clips and here the whole test setup where we can read the, the base voltage, the base current, that's important of course, the supply voltage and this is the the thing that supplies the voltages, the power supply, and here the collector current, and that is the current that flows between the collector and the emitter. And I have by purpose uh, made it in this way to keep the explanation a little bit, um, say, simple in a certain way, of course. So the video is called the studying the properties of healthy or not healthy of course when the transistor is not healthy you will don't have these uh, good measuring results but anyway uh, studying the properties of bipolar germanium and silicon transistors NPN. This is the whole test setup and in fact it's extremely basic and there is one thing that you always have to uh, remember. This is a kind of golden rule when you want to test uh, B bipolar transistors. The NPN transistor starts to conduct between the collector and the emitter, so a current starts to flow between collector and emitter when a positive voltage is added to the base. And for a PMP transistor it's more or less reversed it needs a negative voltage on its base to start a collector emitter current. So positive and negative are in a certain way relative um, things. Anyway, here is the whole test setup again. Uh, here is the transistor under test. So it's an NPN transistor, so when we add a positive voltage on the base um, that is done with this potentiometer. The transistor starts to conduct, and when we make the base of the transistor pure negative. The, transi the transistor will start to block the current between the uh, collector and the emitter. And I found for instance that I had to make the base of that transistor very negative. I had to say uh, pull it down to the absolute ma uh, minus here, this transistor, to block the collector emitter current and that's why you see here this switch and it's closed. So, uh, this is that 1K resistor in the test circuit and this crocodile clip uh, is connected to a wire that shortcuts that 1K resistor and otherwise I could not pinch off the transistor completely. Uh, here we read the base voltage uh, they often say a uh, germanium transistor starts to conduct with 0.3 volts approximately on its base and the silicon transistor starts to conduct with approximately 0.7 or 0.8 volt on its base and that's correct. But when I do did these tests and I want to show that better I found somewhat other values but Anyway, so here we measure the base current. This is a meter going from 1 to 10 milliampere 
and here we measure the collector current and the relation between the base current is the so-called um, amplification factor current amplification factor often called uh, HFA uh, but uh, as far as I know that only regards in a certain way the grounded emitter circuit but anyway this is the very is a very true way this test here is a very true way to find out the relation between the base current and the collector current and thus how much such a transistor amplifies that current amplification and I did, I did a few tests I want to show the results these are the results of the first test at 12 volt we have a base voltage sorry yes a base voltage of 0 0.19 volts a base current of 1.5 milliampere collector emitter current of 45 milliampere so the amplification factor is 30 I did that with this transistor the AC187 germanium so let's see what happens because there are many interesting effects so let's first go back to uh, zero voltage no supply voltage to the circuit of course with no supply voltage there is also no uh, collector current collector emitter current there is no base voltage there is no uh, base current etc so nothing happens and now we set the supply voltage to say 12 volts here we can read it kind of difficult anyway 12 volts and we see the base voltage is 0 0.18 volts or 17 volts the base current is 1.3 um, milliampere and the collector current is approximately 50 milliampere so 50 milliampere divided by 1.3 that tells us the amplification factor and we can also see at least in this experiment that does not happen always that when we change the supply voltage to a higher, a higher voltage the current amplification stays the same but that has also to do with the setup that I have here the test setup and um, of course in this test setup uh, the maximum um, current cannot go higher than a certain value because of this resistor 280 ohms that was in my opinion a, a safe value and for worst case situations a fuse and a 3.9 ohm resistor so when you say that the transistor is shortcut the maximum current that can flow is 100 milliampere due to ohm's law uh, well that was all to tell we go now to a higher supply voltage let's go to uh, 18 volts and let's look at the, at the uh, collector emitter current it goes up somewhat 18 volts and we have say um, here are the values approximate values and we can go to the highest um, voltage of course study the data sheets that's a very good advice read the data sheet before you do such a test because uh, when the transistor cannot handle uh, 20 volts or 30 volts it will burn out be it whatever transistor though many uh, germanium transistors of the 70s and 60s and 80s can can handle 20 volts and also silicon transistors in general can surely handle 20 volts or 30 volts 
but anyway be careful and uh, something to take in account when you change the value of this resistor to a lower value you can just test uh, power transistors they have in general a high um, current amplification so this is a safe value but uh, when you lower that value you can test also test power transistors but be careful with the supply voltage in such a case and read the data sheet anyway uh, I was talking about um, the base current here uh, 21 volts let's go somewhat higher 24 volts supply voltage and we read now the collector current and it is approximately say 80 milliampere with this germanium transistor here this one it doesn't get hot that's good of course so this uh, this uh, shows a certain setting of that potentiometer of 10k. I found that experimentally that that was a good value. But we can also set that potentiometer that's responsible for the base current and for the base voltage to another value. So let's do that. And that shows us also a few important properties of the transistor when a certain uh, base current is reached it cannot get higher that means that the transistor is driven into saturation so the maximum collector emitter current uh, is then present in the circuit and that depends of course on the voltage etc etc but uh, when you want to drive a transistor into saturation, in this case an MPN transistor, uh, you can say mount here a resistor of a certain value, say for 12 volt it's 1K or so, and here a BD139, and then it's in saturation. Um, well, a lot to tell. Um, I will change now this. And that is this potentiometer here, P110K. And I will give it all a higher, I, um, lower resistance and thus a higher voltage. So when I change this, and here you see the more or less a situation uh, where um, we have saturation. When I change this, I turn now that knob, it's maximum here and it cannot go higher. But that is of course dependent on the supply voltage. So let's go in that more or less saturation situation to the maximum voltage that I want to give this transistor, 24 volts. So 24 volts, maximum current is flowing. At least that's dependent on that resistor of 280 ohms. And we see now, say, uh, 80 milliampere. Uh, and the base current is in this situation 2.7 milliampere. The base voltage 0 0.22. That's quite low in my opinion, but anyway, has everything to do with the way I test this. So and here are the test results. I only have uh, 45 seconds on my camera, but anyway, uh, these are the test results. So I hope it, I hope it was a little bit clear. You can expect uh, uh, all kinds of say different values when you do the measurements, and also this is important. When you change the, when you give that uh, base of this transistor a more positive and a higher base current, uh, 
the higher current starts to flow and there is a relation between the base current and the, the supply voltage of course. So with a power transistor like this one, the BD139, I've also tested it. It, by the way, it's not germanium, it's silicon. And I read here that the current amplification is 200. But when you test it in this way, you will see that that also differs regarding the supply voltage. Anyway, a true formula, very true. And well, uh, these tests are very interesting, especially when you want to do a good assessment and especially for germanium transistors. They often show, say, very, very strange values on the meters when you measure them. But this is a very true way to uh, find out the properties of a germanium transistor and uh, for a PMP transistor the whole circuit can be exactly the same. Perhaps I will do another video about testing a PMP transistor but the voltage has to be reversed. Reversing the voltage means that you can test a PMP transistor here. And the meter voltage has to be reversed. Um, this voltage meter has to be reversed. But uh, when you use, for instance, a digital voltmeter, you don't have to reverse the electrodes because the meter indicates in such a situation a, a negative indication. Anyway, this is, in my opinion, all. I wish you luck.